St Mary's on Trinity Sunday. Thank you for joining us on the live stream, uh, regular members and uh, anyone who's new to joining us. It looks uh, from the YouTube window at the moment as though we have one or two more than we've been having recently. Here are a couple of phone numbers on the screen. The first one is my mobile number and it'd be lovely if you would text greetings to the rest of the church family, let people know that you're part of this virtual gathering so that we have more of a sense of being together and so, so 07905 883 075 is my mobile phone and uh, do send me a text towards the end of the service I'll read those out to one another and particular thing you might like to say something that you're thankful for at the moment um, different people are finding this whole experience of lockdown different and uh, we could encourage one another with the things that we're finding to give thanks to God for. The other phone number, this is a new one and uh, you'll see it's a Bath number so it costs a normal amount of a local call which is free for many people. 697200. If you know somebody who is doesn't use the internet and therefore can't be uh, using YouTube to be part of this live stream service, they might be interested in listening on the phone to a recording of the service and so what happens is you dial this number and then you get a menu and you can choose St Mary's or St Nicholas the, listening to a recording of the whole service or just of the sermon and, uh, and then it plays it non-stop and you listen on the phone or put it on speakerphone and listen. It's not as versatile as YouTube, you can't pause it and so on, but could be really helpful for those who don't have the internet, so please do be thinking of somebody you could share that with and invite to listen in, 697200. Today's Trinity Sunday and uh, so a special greeting for us but actually we don't have a, sorry I'm getting a bit mixed up. Uh, let's use our normal morning prayer greeting. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father be with you. And also with you. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. And our first hymn uh, is Holy, Holy, Holy. Those words are uh, taken from Isaiah's vision of the seeing the Lord in the temple and hearing the heavenly beings crying out holy 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 three times over because he's so holy and there's a hint there of God's trinitarian nature he is three in one the father the son and the holy spirit are holy
We've come together in the name of Christ to offer our praise and thanksgiving, to hear and receive God's holy word, to pray for the needs of the world and to seek the forgiveness of our sins that by the power of the Holy Spirit we may give ourselves to the service of God. God the Father forgives us in Christ and heals us by the Holy Spirit. Let us therefore put away all anger and bitterness, all slander and malice, and confess our sins to God our Redeemer as we pray together. Lord God, we have sinned against you. We have done evil in your sight. We are sorry and repent. Have mercy on us according to your love. Wash away our wrongdoing and cleanse us from our sin. Renew a right spirit within us and restore us to the joy of your salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Father of all mercies cleanse us from our sins and restore us in his image to the praise and glory of his name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Blessed is the Lord. For he has heard the voice of our prayer. Therefore shall our hearts dance for joy. And in our song we will praise our God. Psalm 8. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. You've set your glory in the heavens. Through the praise of children and infants, you have established a stronghold against your enemies to silence the foe and the avenger. When I consider your heavens, the work of your fingers, the moon and the stars which you've set in place, what is mankind that you are mindful of them, human beings that you care for them? You've made them a little lower than the angels and crowned them with glory and honour. You made them rulers over the works of your hands. You put everything under their feet, all flocks and herds and the animals of the wild, the birds in the sky and the fish in the sea, all that swim the paths of the seas. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and shall be forever. Amen. And straight on now, it's good to see Johnny and I gather her parents are watching in South Africa as well. Well, good morning, Johnny. Lovely to see you and uh, to include you in our streamed service for St Mary's. Um, how are you today? Um, so good morning, John T. Um, I am really well, thank you, and I feel very blessed to be well. And I also feel very blessed by the weather that we're having at the moment. So, yeah, it's lovely yeah. sunshine, yeah. isn't it? And have you got Dusty with you? I have Dusty with me, and uh, she had a haircut yesterday. So would you she's like to show that to the camera? Or was... Yeah, I can. Um, but she's very short, um, <laughs> so maybe maybe she won't. She's asleep right now. So. No, she doesn't want picking up at the moment. Well, uh, um, so, um, so and how long have you had Dusty? Um, so Dusty is um, so the end of it, on the twenty fourth of April. She was one year old, and I've had her since June. So um, so she's been fantastic company. Um, and for and those who don't know what she is. Sorry. For those who don't know what she is. Oh, okay. So I will. I will show her. She, like, okay. We we'll keep everyone in suspense. <laughs> <laughs> so here she comes. Oh, poor Dusty is being woken up, and there she is. Hello. Good morning, Dusty. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so Johnny, those who are alert to accents would have spotted you're not from Somerset. Yes, I'm not. Um, so I, um, I'm from South Africa, and um, yeah, so born near Johannesburg, and um, lived there for 27 years, and then came um, to Bath after doing three degrees in um, Johannesburg. I came to Bath to do my PhD. And that was in 1997. So that's when I came. 1997 with three degrees. And how did you get involved at St Mary's? Um, so that's quite interesting, actually. So um, I grew up in a Christian family. Um, and it, it's that thing that you kind of always think that you're a Christian. But I actually um, 
sort of reconfirmed my faith in well when I was about 15 years old and um and took that quite seriously and then after the move um, to England, I actually didn't have a church to go to. So I uh, prayed about it and then found St. Mary's and um, then came to St. Mary's, oh gosh, it's quite late actually, um, probably in sort of 2005 or something like that, so yeah. And um, by which point you were living in Claverton? Yes, 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 yes. I'd already been in Clement in a while. Yeah. yeah. And um, how's life in lockdown for you? It seems to be affecting different people in different ways. Sure. So um, I find it actually quite busy work-wise. So the university is really busy. Um, you know, we're having to find alternative ways to teach our students, to assess our students. Um, and we, we're having to support our students. Um, you know, because quite a few of our students have got mental health issues. But in other ways, I feel quite blessed that I can continue my work um, and I continue to write and work very long hours. <laughs> um, so it was a blessing to have a bank holiday weekend, which I actually did take off. So, um, so I'm well finding it quite, yeah, I'm finding it sort of um, important to create some structure and um, take some time off but also feel very blessed um, that that life is is able to continue as as it was before it's good to count our blessings even though there are there are disappointments along the way as well and i know you should have been traveling quite a lot this year Yes, 100%. Yes. So as, as, um, as you know, I, I, I'm on sabbatical. So I would have had several study visits um, to, um, yeah, so to Spain, to South Africa, to Canada. Um, and I'm having to sort of cancel of that. So, but it's, it's great to find ways around it as well. So I think um, what, what I find a real blessing about this time is that people are so caring. Um, so the amount of emails I've had, the amount of calls I've had, um, just where people that you wouldn't have heard from for ages would just, um, you know, check in and, and um, just see how you are. So I, I find even though I, I'm on my own and like I don't have a family that lives with me, I, I've not felt lonely for a second. Um, so that's been amazing. So, yes, yeah, so, and, and I, I just really hope that the lessons that we learn from this um, and, and now I talk to my family every day in South Africa, mm. um, that we will, we will continue to hold that in our hearts. I think that's important. Mm. Thank you. And how can we pray for you? Um, I think for me, it's more praying for my students um, and, and that they would not suffer from mental health issues and you know, students that are finishing and wanting to find jobs and they don't know if they have grades and they don't have a graduation and, and massive uncertainty in the university. I think that's the main thing to pray for. Right. OK, thank you very much, Johnny. Really good to see you. Um, hope you have, have a good week. Okay. And now we turn to... Thank you, Johnny. Yes, uh, we turn to God's word. So if you have a, a Bible handy, uh, do find Isaiah in the Old Testament and Thomas is going to read to us our two readings. Good morning, everybody. The first reading is taken from Isaiah. It's chapter 23, A Prophecy Against Tyre. Wail, you ships of Tarshish, for Tyre is destroyed and left without house or harbour. From the land of Cyprus word has come to them. Be silent, you people of the island, and you merchants of Sidon, whom the seafarers have enriched. On the great waters came the grain of the Shihor. The harvest of the Nile was the revenue of Tyre, and she became the marketplace of nations. Be ashamed, Sidon, and you fortress of the sea, for the sea has spoken. I have neither been in labour nor given birth. I have neither reared sons nor brought up daughters. When word comes to Egypt, they will be in anguish at the report from Tyre. 
cross over to Tarshish. Wail, you people of the island. Is this your city of revelry? The old, old city, whose feet have taken her to settle in far-off lands? Who planned this against Tyre, the bestower of crowns, whose merchants are princes, whose traders are renowned in the earth? The Lord God Almighty planned it, to bring down her pride in all her splendour, to humble all who are renowned on the earth. Till your land as they do along the Nile, daughter Tarshish, for you no longer have a harbour. The Lord has stretched out his hand over the sea and made his kingdoms tremble. He has given an order concerning Phoenicia that his fortresses be destroyed. He said, No more of your revelling, virgin daughter Sidney, now crushed. Up, cross over to Cyprus. Even there you will find no rest. Look at the land of the Babylonians, this people that is now of no account. The Assyrians made it a place for desert creatures. They raised up their siege towers. They stripped its fortresses bare and turned it to a ruin. Wail, you ships of Tarshish, your fortresses destroyed. At that time, Tyre will be forgotten for seventy years, the span of a king's life. But at the end of these seventy years, it will happen to Tyre as in the song of the prostitute, Take up a harp, walk through the city, you forgotten prostitute. Play the harp well, sing many a song, so that you will be remembered. At the end of seventy years, the Lord will deal with Tyre. She will return to her lucrative prostitution and will ply her trade with all kingdoms on the face of the earth. Yet her profit and her earnings will be set apart for the Lord. They will not be stored up or hoarded. Her prophets will go to those who live before the Lord, abundant for food and fine clothes. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. The second reading is taken from the second letter to Corinthians, chapter 13, verses 11 to 13. Final greetings. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration. Encourage one another, be of one mind, live in peace, and the God of love and peace will be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. Speak, Lord, your servants are listening. Amen. How much do you talk about money? As I talk with people around Claverton and Barthampton about how they're doing during the pandemic, certainly one of the dominant themes, as we heard from, from Johnny in a lovely way, is gratitude for our blessings, and uh, in particular our material blessings. We may not be thinking about money directly, but we recognise that life is not nearly so bad for those of us who live in a lovely part of the world with nice houses and spacious gardens in the glorious spring weather we've been having. And you may have spotted that the uh, interview with Johnny was recorded when it was uh, even warmer than and sunnier than it is today. Uh, as it must have been, um, it's much, not nearly so bad for us as it must be for those who've been locked down with for weeks on end in cramped conditions with no access to the great outdoors. Those with a secure income feel we have much less to worry about than those whose livelihoods are under severe threat or even already destroyed by COVID-19. Furloughing and government money has eased the trauma for many, but still people are calling for government to pay for more things for more people. And then comes the realisation that government money means taxpayer money. There's no magic money tree and we fear tough times ahead. Today's prophecy from Isaiah is about the city state of Tyre. Here it is today. 
In its day, Tyre was a very influential island city just off the coast of Lebanon. The people living there were Phoenician, and there on the map is Phoenicia. The green area is uh, the Phoenician settlement area. And can you see the cluster of red dots along the eastern coast of the Mediterranean? It may depend how big your screen is as to whether you can see that or not. Tyre is the southernmost of those cities. It prospered not through military conquest like Assyria, but through trade. The Phoenician people tried to get on with everyone so they could make a profit. They were a seafaring people and Phoenician ships sailed all over the known world, leading to Phoenician colonies all over the place. They are the white dots wherever the red trade routes took them. And so there were green areas of settlement as far west as Spain, which I think is where Tarshish was, although there are other theories. And people say the Phoenicians even came on as far as Cornwall to trade in tin. Anyway, the city of Tyre, with its strong safe harbours and its fleet of merchant ships, became the financial capital of the Eastern Mediterranean, maybe the equivalent of the city of London. Phoenicians living and trading in settlements all over the world could look back to their prosperous home base of Tyre and know they were well backed and could keep making money. Isaiah 23 verse, 20, verse 3 describes this trade. On the great waters came the grain of Shehor, another name for the Nile. The harvest of the Nile was the revenue of Tyre and she became the marketplace of the nations. But Isaiah proclaims his vision, which sees all this collapse. Verses 1 to 7 describe how wealth is unreliable. It's bound to let you down. Isaiah pictures a Phoenician ship sailing all the way back from Tarshish, Spain, and it gets as far as the stop off in Cyprus. And here's the news. Tyre is destroyed. There, there's no home to go to. There is no safe haven where you thought your ship would always be welcome and you could cash in after all this trading. The sailors are gobsmacked, speechless. Be silent, verse 2. You people of the island and you merchants of Sidon. Sidon was a sister city close by sharing trade. The silent cities are something we got a taste of when lockdown started. Even the bustling city of London, the great financial centre, fell eerily silent as coronavirus hit and people stopped going to work. Back to the time Isaiah foresaw, even in Egypt, they're worried about the news because the collapse of Tyre means the whole regional economy is in trouble and a loss of market for Egypt's grain exports. Colonists away in Tarshish have become refugees. All these people whose lives were built on their trade and their wealth, who felt so self-sufficient, have the rug pulled from under their feet. Their wealth is gone. It was unimaginable to the people of the time that the wealthiest and most secure would fall. I was thinking about what would be a, a modern parallel and my first thought was America. The dollar is so powerful all over the world and that country is so rich, so secure. And then I thought, no, an even better example is staring me in the face. What would be a seafaring nation that built great wealth and influence all over the world, a people that traded with others everywhere and made vast profit building up a secure home nation, an empire that turned a quarter of the world pink. It's us. We've seen a gradual closure of the British Empire, thankfully more peacefully than the fall of many other empires in history, and a gradual slide of Britain's position of influence and economic dominance in the world, rather than 
catastrophic destruction like Tyre, but we can see that our wealth is not reliable. Do you and I take that to heart? Then the people who suffered from this great downfall naturally asked why. Verse 8, who planned this against Tyre? The answer is, the Lord is in control, but people wobble and fall. This is hard to accept for people who think that God must be what we want him to be, everything we like, and that anything that makes us feel better must be from God, and anything that seems bad for us or causes us pain must be from the devil against God's will. Because the Bible doesn't present God like that. There is a devil who wants to harm us, but he never overcomes God. God is in control of everything. The Lord is king. He is sovereign. This fall of Tyre didn't take him by surprise. He had a purpose in it. The merchants in verse 10 are turned into humble farmers. Why? It's like people all over the world in the last few weeks turning to growing their own food. The damage to the world economy in the fall of Tyre in Isaiah 23 was not something that happened by accident. The Lord stretched out his hand over the sea, verse 11, and made its kingdoms tremble. God's purpose in it was in verse 9, the Lord Almighty planned it to bring low the pride of all glory and to humble all who are renowned in the earth. This is the way God works. It's what the Virgin Mary said when she realised how blessed she was to carry the Lord Jesus. And you can read it in, in Luke chapter 1 or let me read it from the old Book of Common Prayer. My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Saviour, for he hath regarded the lowliness of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed, for he that is mighty hath magnified me, and holy is his name, and his mercy is on them that fear him throughout all generations. He hath showed strength with his arm, he hath scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seat and hath exalted the humble and meek. He hath filled the hungry with good things and the rich he hath sent empty away. He, remembering his mercy, hath holpen his servant Israel as he promised to our forefathers, Abraham and his seed, forever. It's thanks to God's mercy that he humbles us. Sometimes, something I'm, I'm hearing a lot as I talk to people about how they're finding the present crisis is that they're seeing the good in it, seeing how we learn to recognise what's really important hoping and praying that when this is all over we won't just go back to how we were before but we'll have learned from it and somehow be changed for the better. God brings us to our senses so we realise the, the shakiness of wealth and stop relying on that and trust his promises instead. Only if we refuse to be humbled if we remain proud and self-sufficient and trust our wealth rather than our creator, only then will we not receive his mercy. This is true for the people of Tyre too. The Lord promises restoration for his own glory. After 70 years, Tyre would recover. The Lord would lift his hand of judgment and things would be eased. Tyre would go back to making money again. This is not necessarily a good thing. The image of a prostitute back in business is hardly a flattering description of how this city would resume international relations all for money. 
but somehow God would be using that for his purposes as well. The new Tyre would supply materials for the rebuilding of God's temple in Jerusalem after the exile of Judah. As Isaiah foresees this, as he looks beyond, he has a longer horizon in view as well. He's not just talking about Old Testament history, but about the really big picture, what's sometimes called eschatology, teaching about the last things. We need to see that Tyre, we need to see all that Tyre represents in the light of eternity. Barry Webb, in his book on Isaiah, this book, uh, says, wealth is the gift of God and it will eventually return to the giver. The nations may prostitute themselves in the pursuit of it, but the people of God must not. They are to seek God and his righteousness and in so doing they will inherit all things. Like technology, as we saw when we thought about chapter 22, it's not wealth itself. It's not that, that wealth itself is bad. It, wealth is a, is a gift from God, as is technology, to be used rightly. But the real danger is of misdirected trust if we place our trust in wealth or technology or human deals and alliances instead of trusting God's promises, we can expect to be humbled. God is faithful. His promises stand. He's promised to save all who trust the Lord Jesus. So let's rely on him and his promises through whatever trials he leads us through and we will find him to be faithful and good. So let's sing praise to him, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. to have so many instruments in St Mary's. 
We're going to say the creed together now and declare our faith in God, the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Just three faces from St Mary's up on the screen at the moment, but there is the opportunity to add your face and it'd be lovely to have everybody um, taking part in this recording for future weeks. Hugh will be producing um, another edition with more uh, people in it. Do see the email in the update for instructions on how to do that or contact me or Hugh if um, you're struggling or not sure how to do it. So uh, we declare our faith. I, I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered on the Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Amen. Um, if you tuned into the live stream before the start of the service, you may have seen an explanation about uh, spiritual communion. and many of us are really missing being able to share bread and wine together the first sunday in the month is a time when we would particularly be doing that normally and uh, yet here is a, an opportunity without bread and wine to consciously feed on the lord jesus um, in our hearts by faith with thanksgiving lord have mercy christ have mercy lord have mercy Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. So let's pray to him. Heavenly Father, we bring before you the needs of the world and our community, conscious of demonstrations and unrest all over the world at a dawning recognition of how black lives matter. We ask your forgiveness for how we have been prejudiced against people of other races. We recognise that that permeates our structures more than we have often acknowledged. And we pray that you would help societies all over the world, especially in the United States and in this country, to demonstrate real equality of opportunity and equality of value of all people's lives. Because all people are made in your image. We pray for justice to be done where there has been injustice and we ask that the demonstrations might be peaceful we give you thanks for the peaceful demonstration in Bath two days ago and ask for wisdom and sensitivity for police in this country and other countries of the world to handle these demonstrations appropriately and keep the peace We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the many blessings that you give us. Thank you for those things that Jani was talking about, um, for being able to continue work, uh, for contact electronically with family. Thank you for the beautiful place you've given us to live in. Thank you for lessons that are being learned through the challenges of this pandemic. And we pray particularly for students and for Jeanne's students, some of whom struggling with mental health issues. Please bring 
restoration to health, bring a sense of perspective, give your peace. And where people are suffering uncertainty, not knowing what they, how they're going to get a job or what the next step is going to look like, we pray that many might find the certainty of hope in the Lord Jesus. And we pray for our own community of Claverton, our parish, uh, both the village and Claverton Down, asking for your peace and security and hope in the Lord Jesus for people in the many different households, people who are unable to go out, people who are starting to venture out, people who are concerned about their livelihoods, people who are concerned about their health and family. We bring all these requests to you in Jesus name. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us, your servants, grace by the confession of a true faith to acknowledge the glory of the eternal Trinity and in the power of the divine majesty to worship the unity. Keep us steadfast in this faith that we may evermore de be defended from all adversities through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray together. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given me for all the pains and insults you have borne for me. Since I cannot now receive you sacramentally, I ask you to come spiritually into my heart. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may I know you more clearly love you more dearly and follow you more nearly day by day. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your disciples, I am with you always. Be with me today as I offer myself to you. Hear my prayers for others and for myself and keep us in your care. Amen. O oh God, help me to trust you. Help me to know that you are with me. Help me to believe that nothing can separate me from your love revealed in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, in these days of mercy, make us quiet and prayerful. In these days of challenge, make us stronger in you. In these days of emptiness, take possession of us. In these days of waiting, open our hearts to the mystery of your cross. Amen. Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you most humble and hearty thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness. We bless you for our creation, preservation and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And give us, we pray, such a sense of all your mercies 
that our hearts may be unfeignedly thankful and that we show forth your praise not only with our lips but in our lives by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days through Jesus Christ our Lord to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be all honour and glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Well, as we come to our next uh, hymn, you may like to consider it to be a, an offertory hymn. There are the bank details if you're doing a transfer or setting up a standing order. Um, see the website as well. Giving by text is an easier way. The text number 70460 and send exactly those words to donate one of those amounts. Um, last week we had a, a visitor from the Bread of Life Society and here are some photos of things going on in the country that he came from. Um, over virtual coffee afterwards he told us a bit about domestic workers being stranded as they're not welcome in the homes they were working in because of COVID-19 and so this charity has been able to distribute food parcels to them. Another work they're doing is translating Sunday school resources into Arabic and uh, here's a, a gift that they took a kilogram of bak baklava to uh, each family celebrating the end of Ramadan um, in the region where they are. Uh, some on their, their newsletter they've sent some interesting photos of the landscape changing as potatoes being planted in places like this and um, there they are growing and uh, so if you would like to to give through St Mary's to this charity um, here are some examples of what we might raise together and so uh, the simple way to give is by text to that same number here it comes on the screen 70460 um, and if you text three mission that would donate three pounds through St Mary's to uh, the Bread of Life Society. Jesus shall reign all over the world wherever the sun is running its journeys uh, Jesus is king and always will be let's encourage one another and ourselves uh, perhaps joining in out loud, perhaps uh, just listening to this lovely hymn. <laughs> I mentioned at the beginning would love to hear something you're thankful for so do send send me a text and I'll read those out in a minute and um, I'd be interested not necessarily for reading out now but on your views of the different ways that we do hymns some um, we have a, available choirs or congregations recordings of them singing for others it's an individual like we just heard um, for others we just use instrumental music and sometimes we have a choice between those 
things and it's interesting to hear what different people find more helpful. Hugh texts, greetings to you all. I've been thankful this week to learn that my hearing is better than I feared. I'm excited about the dial a sermon idea too. It'd be great to hear about whether people are using it. Lots of love, Hugh. And thank you, Hugh, for the work in setting up um, dial a service and dial a sermon. Uh, thank you. And Jani has texted uh, with greetings to her parents in South Africa. Um, and greetings to the church family. Uh, there may be more coming in. Let's just see what else we've got on the, I can't remember what else is coming up on the screen. Oh, that's everything before we finish off. Joanna has texted in again. This is Anne Hopkins Clark's daughter, as I expect we all um, remember. Uh, greetings to all, so grateful for more opportunities to meet in parks and gardens. Thanks for today, all best, Joanna. Um, yeah, it's those seeing people face to face, even from a distance, is uh, means such a lot after we've been so isolated from each other and just seeing each other on screens. And for anyone living on their own, um, that must be uh, something to be be very thankful for. Um, if you're just texting in as I move on, I won't get it for 30 seconds, so um, sorry if uh, your text is missed this week. May the peace, May the peace of, God, of God, which, which passes all understanding, keep, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Jesus. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. So why not offer one another a sign of peace by phoning up someone else from the church family and uh, seeing how they're doing and blessing one another in that kind of way. See you next week.